Yeah, it's perfect to see uh, in our own direct experience and how our thoughts, emotions, sensations and other experiences are always changing. And the attempts that many of us put in place for, for decades were to try and keep our thoughts, emotions, sensations, what we call here data streams, in a certain direction. And that's for sure what I did with my life before coming across the Balance View training. It was a lot focusing on what do I think, what do I feel? Is it proper or not correct? And how can I keep it in place, the good ones, the positive data? You know, I like the people around me, I'm confident, I'm stable, happy, trying to keep that in place and doing everything I can to eradicate everything that I consider to be negative. For example, hope and fear, desire, jealousy, envy, arrogance, pride, paranoia. All of these data streams that I condemn and based on what I learned that they are wrong and some, somehow they don't belong to the my wisdom, <laughs> they don't belong to my intelligence. Maybe for the other people, the less proper one, the less elevated ones, but not for me. And constantly, from a very young age, I indulged heavily in thinking about my data streams. And I'll give you a few examples. Something comes up and I, f and I say, ooh, ooh, it's the wrong one and there's all the you know, the lights going on and the alarms, okay, what do we do with that? Let's think about it, why it's there, and starting a whole process. As soon as I wake up, why it's there, why it's there, okay, I read a book that says, oh, it's because of my ego, or because of my past lives, or because of my psychology complexes that I can relate to so many problems, oh, parents, parents, yeah, my, or partner, partner, partner. <coughs> No, the cat did something wrong. Oh, oh, you know, and trying to grab a, a reason, a cause that caused my um, depression, for example, or sadness. Can you relate to that? Okay, great. So think how much time you spend thinking about what you're thinking and feeling and then trying to improve that. And we learn all kinds of ways to do that. You know, I, I just thought a lot and spend my time trying to fix my moods and I noticed that I'm moody from the age of six, <laughs> seriously. And then I learned that, okay, it's, I grew up in teenage time, adolescence, okay, that's the hormones and the things like that. But going into my 20s, the moods didn't change. And I was like, okay, well, that's even more concerning because I thought I will reach 18 or 20 and then it will finish and I'll be stable. But whoa, the moods were always up and down and in between and like very quick and rapid changes. And it made me feel ashamed actually. And it made me feel concerned. So what was my reaction to that? More thinking. <laughs> Wait, I passed the age that I'm supposed to be moody, so why it's still going on? Da -da 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 -da. And the process, the hamster wheel keeps going on. What did I want to achieve by thinking and trying to change my, my data streams was to find relief, to find fulfillment, to be stable. And I assumed my, in my mind I had this result that if I'll do everything that I need to do, I will come to a place with a flat line that either there will be just happiness forever, you know, in terms of descriptions, happy, love, da, da, da. Or there will be some kind of balance <laughs> that I thought in an imaginary balance between the negative and the positive. But with my mind uh, and my intelligence, this is not the case at all. What we come to see, and this is the insight, that the thoughts, emotions, sensations and other experiences are unpredictable. They are ceaseless, they are forever changing, flickering lights, data streams. If we put all of our life effort, dedication, time and resources in trying to fix the display to a better display, we will be forever caged in reification, giving an independent nature to something that cannot be found to have an independent nature. Like breeze is independent, it cannot be found to have an independent nature from air. 
or everything within space cannot be found to have an independent nature from space. <laughs> but we learn that mood, mode of operating uh, and, and we think that that's what we should do. And if you've tried it for a while, and um, by your smiles and nods I can see that you have, you can see that this one is forever doomed to fail. So what is the solution actually? That's what I ask myself. What is the solution? Will I continue forever thinking about my data streams and trying to purify them and to improve them and have more positive thoughts? Even that at one point, because I've became really good in that, like reaching good states of mind by efforting, by meditating for long hours, by you know, doing the right movements or whatever. And I also at one point I was like, oh, that's completely boring. I, I, can't, I can't continue like that. Okay, I'll feel happy, but I knew already from experience that the down will come after that. So it was like even more, you know, I reached those elevated states of mind on the Ganga in Rishikesh. I was one with everyone and then <laughs> collapsing into the cold water of the Ganga and feeling like I can't get out of it. So it might sound a bit dramatic, but each one of you can relate in your own experience. How do you relate to yourself, to your own beautiful appearances of data streams? What is the solution? That's what I ask myself. And the solution is recognizing, in being first of all introduced to the nature of mind, the wisdom mind, open intelligence. And to be introduced to open intelligence directly in your own experience, stop thinking just for a moment. What remains when you stop thinking? Alertness, openness, clarity, the power to know. This is open intelligence. What's looking through your eyes? Always on, never switched off. And then after we stop thinking, of course, the next data stream arises, whatever it is, thought, emotion, or sensation, and that's completely fine. Now we see that once we've been introduced to open intelligence, we have a choice. Whether we are thinking or not thinking, we can recognize the inseparability of open intelligence and the data. Like the color blue is inseparable from the sky. Everything that we can think and feel, no matter if it's high, low, or in between, is due to the power of open intelligence, the power to know. And don't think about it too much, especially if you're new to the training. Just see that you have a choice to relax for a short moment, repeated many times, until the instinctive recognition of open intelligence becomes obvious at all times, pervading all the ever-changing descriptions, the data streams. This is the practice of, of balanced view, open intelligence. Open intelligence for the benefit of all, because rather than being focused on ourselves and how we need to fix a flawed entity, purify it, rearrange it, micromanage it, think about it, tell about it to others, now we see that we are open and free all of the time. There is complete perceptual openness in all experiences. Freedom in immediacy of perception. The practice of short moments allows us to gain confidence in that, simply to get used to it, one moment at a time. So we don't say, rely on open intelligence for one hour, for ten days, and then you maybe will reach something. What is this something? We will put all kinds of strange labels around it so you won't understand completely. Maybe you'll reach it. <laughs> But what we're saying here is just, wow, you've been introduced to open intelligence, you have a choice to relax body and mind completely right now with whatever is your data stream. Overwhelm, try a short moment of complete relaxation, feeling completely connected to everyone and like you've done that, you know, you are the greatest hippie in the entire universe, take a short moment. Relax body and mind, drop the need the heavy load of micromanaging the data. And this is the power of short moments repeated many times, gaining confidence in that. And for those of you who are new and 
<laughs> and for everyone, you know, when we start with the short moments, at times it can seem like, what is it? Like, I can't take it when I'm really intensely afflictive, afflictive or, you know, I look at my bank account and <laughs> everything is coming up or going down, <laughs> if, if it's a bank account numbers. Um, what can I do there where it seems difficult to rely on a short moment? Don't effort. It's really an effortless practice. And this is something I, I heard from my teacher, my trainer, many times. When, when it's hard for you and you like try to figure out, okay, short moment, how do I do it? What is it exactly? Forget about it. Forget about the short moment. And instead, pick up one of the other supports. One of the other, we have an entire empowerment network called the Four Mainstays, and that's brilliant. That's really brilliant, because when it's difficult to take a short moment, you can always rely on one of the other four mainstays. So short moment is just one of the mainstays. The second one is a trainer, someone who can share their experiences and say, oh yeah, for sure, I, I've been to these situations where I felt bombarded by the display of my mind and I, I wasn't sure what to do. And then I could, I, I could rely on a trainer who shared with me their experience and see that I can also relax there and not effort to try and be relaxed, to try and recognize open intelligence. I can pick up one of the training media, listen to a talk, and just allow the soothing words to evoke this instinctive recognition. A text, a book, participate in a training, be in a training setting like here. That's the third mainstay, the training and the training media. And the community of balanced view. Being around other people who are relying on the four mainstays and open intelligence as a priority is a great gift. Seriously, I thought I will, I will need to do it by myself before coming across balanced view. I thought, okay, I will pick up all the ideas and belief systems along the way and I will do it by myself. Why? Because I'm the special one. <laughs> I don't need support, like why? Receiving education in the most essential thing in the world, I don't need support. But when I learned to ride a bicycle, I asked for support. <laughs> when I learned a new language, I'm passionate about some languages, I was for sure looking for the best teacher available who will support me to, to learn the, this new language. When I wanted to cook something new, I asked my wife. I wasn't like, <laughs> I will do it by myself. You see, but there is some kind of a Western <laughs> thing, probably, for many of us that we say, oh, I don't need the support. I don't want to be dependent. I don't want people to tell me what to do. But think about how you learned anything else. In humility and openness and finding the, the proper ed education in whatever we were passionate about, then the support is available. And this is really the essence of the Four Mainstays. It's all about our own empowerment. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that this is the gift that I've received in such a young age. I was like, what do they want? <laughs> <laughs> what do they want exactly? But I tr tested it. And initially I, I said I will test it for 30 days. You know, like when you buy a software or something like that and you have a 30 days trial. So I said I will do that and afterwards I can come back to all my beautiful belief systems and ways of micromanaging data that just led for more confusion but they felt so familiar. <laughs> so I, I knew I could come back to that. So I did the trial and like wow, taking a short moment was such an incredible relief for everyone around me. You know my moods, my wife was a victim of my moods. Because I was constantly speaking with her about it. I woke up in the morning moody and then she needed to hear all about it. <laughs> Why? Because she's next to me. <laughs> and if it was someone else, they needed to hear all about it. That was my form of relief and resolution. It never led anywhere. And it affected all of my relationships. So next time I woke up moody and I was like, okay, I made a commitment for 30 days my trial version of open intelligence, I will apply it, right? Otherwise, I will not know. I can think about it, mm, interesting moods, open intelligence, like the color blue in the sky. But what happens if I actually allow this data stream to be as it is? And what I experienced, and what I experience now, is this freedom in immediacy of perception. And how this mood, whatever it is, 
self-releases itself like a line drawn in water. And there's an immediate empowerment when you recognize, wow, I was never a victim of this data stream. Never. It's all made up, all the stories I've told myself. Why I feel a certain way and it's because of this and that, it's made up. The fact that there are many books around it and people who are doing like that when you s share a problem doesn't mean that it's correct. When we rest as reality itself, then we see, wow, I'm free to choose how to be of benefit in every moment. How can I use my strengths, gifts and talents to flourish in the world and contribute to what I'm most passionate about? This is something that is released, the powers of great benefit.